What you're looking at is a series of books published by Crestwood House in the late 70s and early 80s, written by Ian Thorne. Long before the internet, this is how I learned about classic monster movies. This was before I started seeing them on TV, before I started collecting these movies. This was where it all started for me. Lots of people first got introduced to the classic monsters through Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine, but I was a little too young for that. These books, it seemed, every library had a few of them, and once I found out about them, I made it a mission to track down and find every last one. The first one I ever checked out was Godzilla. I don't remember exactly why, I guess I was attracted to the cover. I've heard of Godzilla before, but I didn't know anything about Godzilla. This was the book that got me interested. They're all written on a very young level, so even as a child, it was an easy read. And on top of that, the pictures were great. At the time, I never saw so many photographs from these kind of movies. I could just imagine what they looked like in motion. And just reading the text brought to mind so many mental images, I could see the movies happening in my head before I actually saw them. From a filmmaking perspective, that was important for me, to learn how to visualize something before you see it in reality. There were some factual errors. It says that there were two endings to King Kong vs. Godzilla. In the Japanese version, Godzilla wins, and the American version, King Kong wins. But that is totally false. I believed that for so many years and never knew the truth until the internet. The pictures on the covers were some odd choices. King Kong? Why, of course, not the original King Kong. It's not like they didn't have the rights to it. It's all over inside the book. Frankenstein? Boris Karloff? Nope, it's Lon Chaney Jr. from Ghost of Frankenstein. Oh, and what belongs on the cover of a book called The Wolfman? Werewolf of London, of course. These minor things aside, the books were informative for a child. It's Monster Movie 101. It was this Dracula book, for example, where I learned about Bela Lugosi and Vlad Tepish, you know, the real Dracula. It's the whole basic history from the Bram Stoker novel all the way to the different Dracula movie series and spin-offs. This series of books we'll call the Orange series because there was also the Purple series, also published by Crestwood House. These ones focused more on individual movies rather than franchises, but with less background information and more just an adaptation. So these were more like storybooks, also written on a young level. I remember reading The Mole People and being totally immersed. I could see the movies so clearly in my mind. And then when I saw the actual movie, it wasn't as good as my imagination. But anyway, this is my personal history. This is how I got into monster movies. With no exaggeration, these books changed my life because it introduced me to something that I enjoy. I tried writing my own book when I was about, uh, I don't know, 14 or 15, and I typed my own reviews of these movies on an old word processor called Bank Street Writer. As you can see, there's still parts missing in the book, these parts I didn't glue in yet, and there's meant to be more that I didn't even write yet. The intention was to introduce other people to monster movies as I had been, but who the hell was going to read this unless I photocopied it? I never imagined that the internet would come along and I'd be able to make videos and share them with the whole world. So if you really want to know where Monster Madness started, this is it. And now I'm sort of living that childhood dream. Isn't technology so cool?